Today we look at the 11 worst endings to NBA careers. No matter who they are, what they've accomplished, or how good they are, every NBA career comes to an end. Some players go out great with a historic last game or season, while others aren't so fortunate. And let's take Larry Bird for example. He to this day is still known as an NBA legend and a top 10 player of all time. He won 3 NBA titles, 3 MVPs, and 3 3 point contests. He had a legendary career built off of competing with Magic Johnson and bringing the NBA and its ratings to new heights that it had never reached before. Very early on it was clear Larry Bird was gonna be that guy and was gonna be something special. I mean in his second season he won league MVP and led his team to a championship, then just slowly got better and better every season. But then in 1985, only his sixth year in the league, he was helping his mom shovel crushed rocks to make a driveway and injured his back, giving him back problems for the rest of his career and that same injury was the one that eventually caused him to retire. Now no one would have expected Bird's career to end like that in what is definitely one of the worst endings of all time. I always thought the story was that he hurt his back taking out the trash for his mom, but shoveling rocks is just as bad. Now Larry Bird was still going to achieve greatness after he first suffered that back injury, but after a couple of years he started to miss a ton of games because of it. And what hurt the most was that when he was actually healthy he could still go, but the back pain and issues just kept coming back and back until he couldn't play any longer. Another good example is Kobe Bryant, and just like Bird, Kobe also had a legendary career, is widely considered to be a top 10 player of all time, and his late career was ruined by injuries. Now we all know how great he was and everything he accomplished, but at 34 years old when he tore his Achilles, everything kinda went downhill. Now right before the injury, he was still at the top of his game and maybe as good as he ever was, but then it happened and everything afterwards was just bad. Starting with later in the summer, even given all the circumstances, the Lakers gave him a 2 year $50 million deal making him the highest paid player in the NBA, which was a controversial move across the league, especially because he only played 6 games the following season. Then in his second year post injury, it was made all about his return even though LA had some young up and coming players on the roster. And let's be honest, it wasn't pretty. He averaged his lowest number since his 4th season in the league, pretty much across the board and only played 35 games, so the Lakers finished with one of the worst records in the league. Then he entered his final NBA season, and announced it was going to be his farewell tour. So this was going to be another entire season all about him, pretty much ignoring the rest of the roster and anything else the Lakers had going. And it was just that, everyone and everything on the team was put aside in 2016 so Kobe could have his farewell tour, and he played even worse in that last season. The young guys rarely got any big moments, LA finished with a terrible 17-65 and 65 record, and even though everyone appreciated him in his last season, and he had one of the best last games ever, nobody can deny that it wasn't a great ending to the superstar career of Kobe Bryant. Not all of the worst career endings came from injuries though. Take Latrell Sprewell for example, a player that had a ton of potential throughout his career and showed it. He was a four time all star, had a few great years, but is widely remembered for only two things. His time on the Timberwolves and how his career actually ended. To give insight on the type of guy Latrell was, in his first couple years he got into two fights with teammates and punched out his head coach for telling him to throw harder passes. So that got him suspended for an entire year. Then fast forward to the end of his career when he eventually ends up on the Kevin Garnett led Timberwolves. The team was making serious noise and becoming real playoff contenders and Latrell became a big part of that. But when Minnesota offered him a 3 year $21 million deal to return, he turned it down because he said it wasn't enough money to feed his family, saying he'd rather retire than play for any less than that. He then proceeded to get no other offers from any other NBA teams, kept to his word and just flat out retired. So he chose to make no money than to play in the NBA for $7 million a year. And what makes it even worse was that most of his properties and houses got foreclosed within three years of retirement. And the entire thing just made him look spoiled, entitled, and most of all pretty dumb too. For someone that was the greatest of all time, Michael Jordan's career didn't really end how you'd expect it to with three retirements and playing for the Washington Wizards. Now had his career ended after his game winner over the Jazz, it would have given him the best ending of all time to an NBA career. But it didn't go like that. His first retirement, that one was understandable. And it was okay, he came back to the league and dominated. But his second, looking back, it was just unfortunate. Fortunate. The only reason he really retired when he did was because Jerry Krause was choosing to break up his team because he wanted to start rebuilding. Directly after a championship, he wanted to start a rebuild. It still doesn't make any sense and it's why MJ still hates him to this day. It did let him walk away on top though, but of course with Jordan not getting to retire on his own terms, he had to come back. He was managing the Washington Wizards and he felt that he could take them to the next level if he stepped back onto the court. But he didn't and while he still played pretty good, he was a shell of his former self who we just saw 4 years earlier. So he played that way for 2 more seasons before finally retiring again, which was anything but a perfect scenario for how his career should have ended. Another player from the 90s whose career didn't necessarily go as planned was Shaq. And his career was a weird one if you think about it. During his time on the Magic and Lakers, he played like a Hall of Famer and one of the most unstoppable forces the NBA had ever seen. But then, after that, things got kinda weird because he left the Lakers and just went on to play second option to a bunch of guys, and would often struggle with weight issues and staying in shape like he should've, which made a lot of his later years tough. And it just wasn't something we were used to seeing from the big man. He played good in Miami 
Miami, had a good year in Phoenix with Steve Nash, but after aging past his prime on the Cavs with LeBron and on the Celtics with their big three, it wasn't pretty anymore. It was just weird to watch him go from team to team and not be the go-to guy, something he had always been throughout his career. And it wasn't any major injuries or anything like that, he just progressively got older and his game slowed down. Then during a game while on the Celtics, it's one of the only times you'll ever see a player just jogging down the court and fall down and get injured. And that's when Shaq said he knew his career was over. So pretty anticlimactic on that end. Same with Jay Williams' NBA career. You probably know Jay as an analyst on ESPN, but years ago, he was the second overall pick. He dominated in college, so the Bulls took him second overall in 2002. He was thought to be a great prospect coming into the league and gave the Bulls hope for a rebuild after MJ left. Well, after an inconsistent rookie season, Jay Williams got into a motorcycle accident and almost lost use of his leg, ultimately ending his NBA career after only one season. It was against his NBA contract to even ride a motorcycle in the first place for that exact reason, so he knew what the consequences were before he did it. So one of the worst endings to an NBA career is definitely one where it ended before it even really got started, for something completely not basketball related too. Of course, we all know Magic Johnson's career didn't pan out the way anyone expected it to. In his very short 12-year career, he did more than most NBA Hall of Famers did in 20 years playing the game. But that's what makes how his career ended so tragic. Even though he played half as long as most NBA players, in that short amount of time, he made his case as a unanimous top five player, which just leaves you to wonder what could have been if he would have stayed healthy. It makes you wonder how much more he could have accomplished. I mean, he retired at only 32 years old. We were just a couple of years away from getting him to see against prime Michael Jordan. He would have found out how well he could have played without Kareem and where he could have really ended up in the GOAT discussion. But instead, before the 1992 NBA season, he got a physical and found out on the spot that he was sick and announced his retirement from the NBA out of nowhere. Now, Elgin Baylor is one you might not have expected, but his career really did have a rough ending. And it proves that it doesn't always pay off to be the nice guy because throughout his career, Elgin helped the Lakers to eight NBA finals, but lost every single time. Well, in 1971, two games into the season, he ruptured his Achilles, rehabbed the entire year, came back the next season, and after playing his first nine games, he said, you know what, I can't play as good as I used to, I'm gonna retire to free up room on the team for some younger guys. Well, the very next game after he retired, the Lakers started their historic 33 game win streak, and then the team would go on to win the title that year. So either Baylor was just extremely unlucky, or maybe he was the problem on the team. Tracy McGrady found himself in a similar scenario. After years of being one of the greatest players and scorers the NBA has ever seen, he wasn't as fortunate with his career as he dealt with being on a terrible team or picking up nagging injuries once he was finally on a contender. So he never had any real playoff runs with him having never made it out of the first round, which is why some people tend to underrate him. Well, he made it through his whole career being pretty unfortunate until his later years when he was bouncing around the league and in 2013, he finally ended up on the Spurs just in time for the postseason, which gave him his first chance to play in a game outside the first round. And even though he only played five minutes a game, he found himself seconds away from becoming an NBA champion until Ray Allen hits that shot and the Heat eventually win it all. Well, he retires after the season, then the Spurs go on and they win the championship the next year. So if Ray Allen hadn't hit that shot or if he had just held on for one more season, he could have got the championship he so desperately wanted. Sure, it wouldn't have felt as good, but it might have felt a little better than retiring ringless. Once Greg Oden's career finally ended, that had to have hurt too. He went from being a guy that really did deserve to be at least a top two pick in the NBA draft to his dreams being crushed after only two seasons. The first overall pick only played 100 games in his career, all because of two bad knees. We've seen draft busts go down with injuries in the past, but never anyone who had luck or knees quite as bad as Greg Oden did. Then finally, there is Vince Carter. We all know and love Vince Carter, and although he was another ringless player, it was a historic and Hall of Fame worthy career that he was a part of. His time on the Raptors and the Nets and helping out numerous other NBA teams over his 20 years in the league was something every fan base appreciated, with him also creating a countless amount of iconic moments throughout it. Well, he didn't have quite the farewell tour that Kobe Bryant did because halfway through his, the entire NBA got shut down. And he never knew that the last game he actually played in was gonna be his last. It's a real emotional night to play in your last ever game, but because of circumstances no one could control, Vince never really got that. Now if you did enjoy the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.